Hello friends, thank you for me for joining me for this show designed to look at our government and the people involved in uh, its operation. Um, my name is uh, Dan Arman and thank you for joining me for I Want to Know and I would like to issue a warm welcome to the Honorable Judge Frank Forgione who is our probate judge for Brantford and North Brantford, correct? Thank you, yes, Dan. Thank That's you for correct. joining me. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I haven't seen you since uh, the Potato Festival a year ago uh, or two when we were collecting parking tickets. Correct. I did that for a long time. Yes, a yes lot of we fun. both have. I love it. Um, so why don't we start by you telling the folks at home what you do? Well, the... Or who... Well, let's start... I'm sorry. Let's start by who you are. Well, I'm... You're Frank Forgione. I'm Frank Forgione. I've lived in town for about 30 years. I grew up in Brantford, lived in North Brantford. I'm living back in Brantford now. I have a daughter who graduated from North Brantford High School in 2010. My nephews, my brother live in town, and uh, I've got great ties to the community and love the town of North Brantford. I've coached baseball for a few years at North Brantford High School and also coached the American Legion team post-83, which included Brantford and North Brantford students and players, and we had a great run for a number of years, so it's been a pleasure. And you're involved with the food pantry as well? No? Correct. The food pantry, uh, Lynn Reardon was truly the catalyst to get that off the ground, and it's a wonderful group of people who run it and are committed to helping our citizens to ensure that those who don't have food are able to get food. Um, a woman named Fran Murphy is the executive director, and she is so generous with her time, with her spirit. She's just a wonderful human being and grateful that she's involved. We couldn't have a better person running the pantry well, on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm sure. How many families do you serve, do you know? Oh, um, over 100. Okay, Over absolutely. 100 people and several hundred people get served as well. Right. So it's been, uh, it's truly been a, a great endeavor and, and tremendously satisfying and I, I wish all of those who needed the help of the food pantry would contact us. Right. Um, moving on to your profession, so what is your history? You, you are MSW and an attorney, correct? Correct. correct. What, what um, sparked your interest in law and, you know, I'm a, you know, therapist as well? I would say my mother. Okay. My mother was a nurse and she drilled education, education, education into my brother and I. And uh, she basically told me that I was going to go to school, and it seemed that I had two, two or three choices, and I was able to get into law school and become a lawyer, and which has been a great profession. And as I was doing that, I was volunteering at the Brantford Counseling Center, and decided to get an MSW. So I was practicing law and obtained a master's degree in social work. It took me several years, and I worked and interned at the Brantford Counseling Center for several years. Fantastic. So the, the combination of the two has been, it's been great in my role as judge of probate. Fantastic. Um, on the law end, what does a probate judge do? Well, for 28 years now. We make decisions. We are faced with situations sometimes which are high conflict sometimes not high conflict, but uh, there's various types of aspects to the probate judge position. Perhaps I could just touch on a few. Sure, of course. When people think of probate, they think of someone has passed away, we need to go to probate. Dealing with um, property. Property, estate. real estate. Yeah. So if, if someone's passed on and there is an estate, there is property, they'll come to the probate court and if there's a will, the will will get admitted if there's no contest. Mm -hmm. And then the probate judge ensures that the assets are distributed in accordance with the will. Mm -hmm. If there is no will and there are assets, people still come to probate and we appoint an administrator as opposed to an executor when you have a will. Mm -hmm. And the statutes tell you how the estate gets distributed in the absence of a will. Okay. So we ensure that the expenses and claims get paid and that the executor or the administrator does his or her duty and distributes in accordance with the law. Okay. And then the other areas, when I first became probate judge, Dan, that was yeah. the primary aspect of being a probate judge. Over the years, we've the probate system, the probate courts have really become a safety net for society. We handle 
a multitude of children's matters. In 2004, we opened the first regional children's court in the state of Connecticut in New Haven. And what does that do? Well, yeah, what does the children's court do? It's a... Which you've gotten awards for that, correct? We, we have. Um, it, it's a court that's dedicated exclusively to children's issues. And, and the types of issues are temporary custody, guardianship, termination of parental rights, adoptions, emancipations and paternities. So you might say, well, what do you need a, another court for that? W what we found is in our local probate courts, we did not have the expertise and the manpower to follow up and make sure that we were rendering the best decisions possible. At the children's court, we, have a, we developed a new model where we have what we call a family specialist, and that's a person who has a master's level degree in social work, counseling, family therapy. So when petitions come in, the first meeting that is scheduled is with the family specialist. And the family specialist gathers the relevant parties together, the parents, they the They do an evaluation of the whole situation, I'm sure. They do that and they assess the situation, they hear the competing interests and talk about what is truly in the best interest of the child. Right. How can the child be protected? How can the welfare of the child be ensured? And what systems and plans need to be put in place to help the family? Mm -hmm. The next step is a hearing before a judge. And, and this would be in New Haven, correct? Because that's our... Correct. So all the 10 towns, including the city of New Haven and the greater New Haven region, go to the New Haven Regional Children's Court for these types of children's matters. Okay. So if a petition gets filed affecting somebody from Brantford or North Brantford, it's it immediately to transferred Haven. to New Haven. Okay. And then we hear the case. We hear the evidence. DCF, Department of Children's and Family, does an investigation. We have their report here, their evaluation. We have the evaluation from the family specialist, and we hear the evidence from the parties. And then we make a decision regarding, usually custody and guardianship of the child. Right. And, and as, as a judge, my concern is always the safety and welfare of the child. The child is of primary importance because the children are helpless, they're defenseless. Right. And, and we have cases where that range from newborns to 17 year olds. Right. And when we're making a decision as to whether or not to place a child with somebody, we have to have an evaluation of who is the most appropriate person. What I try to do, Dan, is make a placement that's safe and appropriate within the family if that's possible, whether it's an aunt, an uncle, frequently grandparents are coming in seeking custody because their children, child may be addicted to drugs, mm -hmm. substance abuse, maybe in prison, mm -hmm. has maybe just disappeared. So if we can make the first placement the lasting placement, the one that works. Plus, we're ideally, where there's a connection already with Correct. the child. And there's some bonding and trust. Right. Then the likelihood of that child being happy and healthy and safe increases dramatically, as opposed to in extreme cases where there's no one who's truly appropriate. I'll place the child with the Department of Children and Families, who then finds someone within their system to place the child with, frequently a stranger. Right. Um, how how are the budgets handled? How is your budget handled? Is it you know generated from North Brantford and Brantford, or is um, the state involved with your budget as well to help you operate? Because since you do really operate on a regional basis, it seems to me. What happens is the probate system is user generated, fee generated. So there's fees based upon estates, decedents' estates. How large the size of the estate is generates the fee, and mm. it's all done by statute. Mm -hmm. uh, payments are made to the treasurer of the state of Connecticut, so the pro local probate courts don't handle so out of the money. That, yeah. um, the money that comes into the system is still not enough to fund the system because we have to appoint attorneys, conservators for people who are indigent, and those people have to be paid. Mm -hmm. Right. So fees, just mere fees, could not cover that. No, and and the the system toward those types of of people pays about ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. So what we find is the the fees that come in go to the treasurer of the state of Connecticut. The probate court administrator has a budget to pay salaries and fund the system, and then the local communities are responsible for 
housing the probate court, mm -hmm. utilities, phones, fax machines, paper, pens. So you're basic operating expenses. Correct. And the towns, the town of Branford and North Branford splits that. I think it's based upon the grand list, whatever the ratio is. Right. And that's how we're funded. Because I can see, you know, how your expenses may increase. But again, as you're saying, you know, you have a children's court. You have all of these different um, expert divisions of expertise, which didn't exist before. Correct. You know, you didn't have the facilities to handle children and all the other matters, say deaths and all the other matters that you have to deal with that now you do. Correct. And, and insofar as the children's matters at the children's court, by placing children with appropriate families, there's not a fee or a cost or a charge associated mm -hmm. with that from our court, unlike when a child may go into foster care. So foster right. parents are frequently licensed and receive a fee. So I, I like to think that we're providing a tremendous service and assistance to people and their families at, at a minimal cost. You're trying to also address the best case scenario for the situation at hand. Correct. Dan, what we get a lot of in now too, and I'm sure you've heard about conservators, you've probably heard the phrase, and people will say to me, well, you know, what types of cases do conservators involved? And, and, and the way I like to describe it is, let's suppose you have a parent, you, we've all heard the, the term Alzheimer's, dementia, mm -hmm. and a parent who can no longer make decisions for him or herself, can't handle finances, can't pay bills, is confused, can't make personal decisions about medical care, treatment, housing. And then you worry about the safety of the individual as well. So we'll, we'll get a, usually a child, a relative will come in with a petition to be appointed conservator, which requires a medical evaluation to accompany it mm -hmm. to make sure that the, you know, the, the liberty interest, the independence of the person is protected. Right. We always appoint an attorney for the proposed conserved person and we schedule a hearing within 30 days of receipt of that application. We hear evidence from the petitioner and from others who have knowledge of the situation. The attorney who's representing the conserved person cross-examines, asks questions, and we, we may even hear from the person who's proposed to be conserved if the attorney's willing to let them testify. Mm -hmm. And then we get medical testimony or psychiatric testimony as well. And then we'll make a decision. I'll make a decision on whether or not, A, the person should be conserved, and B, who that conservator should be. Are you invo involved with any other boards or commissions? Um, well, related? I'm involved with the Food Pantry, Food North Pantry, Brand, right. And right. I'm also involved with the North Branford Education Foundation. Okay. In fact, you want I just tell had us a, a little bit about that. Sure. We're, there's about eight or nine of us. Frank Mentone's the president. And what we do is throughout the course of the year, we raise money. We'll have, in fact, we have the Shining Star Dinner coming up next week, which has now been, we've renamed it and the award in honor of Alan Davis. Oh, fantastic. Uh, who just provided superhuman efforts and energy to the entire town. For and, more than 40 years. And he was a which member. Is incredible. Oh, he was a board member of the Ed Foundation. Right. So we'll raise money, and then when uh, s s teachers may have special projects that aren't funded in the budget, They'll apply for us asking for a stipend or a grant to fund something that they may be doing. Maybe they're bringing a, a, a poet in, an artist in, a musician in, or they, there's some program, a leadership program that they want to implement in the school. So we'll consider the grant and, and fund that. Students are able to apply for grants themselves. Let's suppose a student is going to the Invention Convention or the Model Congress in Washington and they need money to attend, they'll apply to us for a scholarship for that type of endeavor. Wow, you're a busy guy. Well, you are too. It's, <laughs> we both do what we love though, it's, right? It's a great community and, and people have been good to me and you know, I've, I'm grateful for the people in my life and I'm you and just both. glad I can be involved. What do you like most about North Brantford? North Brantford is a community that takes care of itself and its own. And you feel that, Dan, from the moment you move into town. Absolutely. And as you become a part of the fabric of the community, you understand that everyone is concerned about the well-being of others and the well-being of the town. And just like you're willing to help others, others are willing to help you. Absolutely. And I think that is incredibly special about this town. And uh, it's a great place to live, and it's a tremendous place to raise children. We are, we are very lucky, aren't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a nice thought. Absolutely. Um, what are your hobbies? 
Do you well, have any? Do you have time for hobbies? Like I said, I. I, I mean, coach, other than going to Florida and making me jealous. I I coached uh, high school baseball for a few years and, and Legion baseball. I coached baseball at the high school level for about 15 years in various positions, and I just I've got two nephews who, my nephew Michael went through the North Bamford school system and he was the Shoreline Conference Player of the Year and a two-time captain Good for at him. Merrimack and my nephew Tyler's in his senior year playing baseball at Trinity. Wow, fantastic. So my father was, uh, when we were kids, he was the commissioner and a coach of the Little League in Branford. And you know, it's, it's in my blood. That's great. So it's, it's uh, and, and to meet the young people, the high school students, to have some impact on their lives and hopefully try to direct them down paths that will help them in the future. Dan, it's, it's you know, we, I, I run into the kids now, they're not kids, they're adults. They, they went to college, they've got jobs, just to hear about what they're doing, how they've succeeded, it's, uh, it's, it's right. really a blessing. Right. Um, what do you foresee um, the challenges um, uh, you see in your expertise in the next upcoming period of time you know are there challenges that you want to address in the future I mean so you address the needs uh, to more focus on children mm -hmm. what is your next um, the next hole you want to plug if you will what what I'm seeing it's not just me what we're seeing throughout the probate system is in in the files the cases in front of us is the level of discord is increasing mm the ability for people to m reach a consensus amount amongst themselves is diminishing. To try to get people to resolve an issue with some help is, it, it, it's just not happening like it used to. And th there, within the probate system, there's a mediation component and I'd like to push more people that way because the people in front of us are families. Right. They're brothers and sisters, they're parents and children. And if they can resolve their own differences in a healthy manner, granted the judges have to make the final decisions, but if they can work through some of their issues before they start to, let's just say, Getting go after. Legal, he legal heavy, if you will. Before right. they start to go after each other right. and say or do things they can't take back, I'd like to see that aspect of the system become more active. Damage prevention. And I'd, yeah, I'd like to see people see what they can work out, whether there's a disagreement over some type of property distri distribution. You know, certain belongings have great sentimental value, even it's though they- multiple people and you can't divide up the belongings. Yes, and, and when you get back to, you grew up together as children, you lived together for a good part of your lives, you hopefully want to maintain relationships for the rest of your sure. lives. Let's work this through, right? And and I'd like to see that the the challenge that we also face as a probate system is budgetary, because of, of the deficits the state has been carrying and trying to plug holes in. Um, it's it's harder and harder to get sufficient funds for any organization within the state to function the way you'd like to. We, when I first became the probate judge, there were 117 probate courts in the state of Connecticut. We're now down to, I believe it's 54. So there's been mergers and consolidations. That's why I was the, was the probate judge in North Brantford for 20 years before the merger. Mm -hmm. In the last seven plus years, it's been both towns. And I think the merger's been very successful. I, I think that the, the workload, although it's increased, the judges are paying, are spending a lot of time at the probate court, and I, I think it's been effective. I think from a budgetary standpoint, it saved the state a considerable sum of money, and you know, my hope is that the state continues to recognize the service we provide and the value. Okay, um, well, you know, I would like to say how much I appreciate all you're doing for the community, for the people, for the children. I mean, it's people like you that make our communities function as healthy as possible the way they do. So thank you on the behalf of the community. Uh, you're very generous in your comment. I, I appreciate I really that, but that. it's a number of people throughout the community that are helping one another. Um, and that's why we are lucky to be here. Um, okay, well, uh, Judge, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I would like uh, to thank everybody for joining me today. 
Um, I would like to make this show as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions for me or comments, questions for guests that we may have in the future, please email me at uh, danarmannb at gmail.com. Please help sustain um, Tatucket TV and please uh, help sustain Tatucket Times. They both serve our community in video and in print. Um, thank you for joining me for uh, this edition of I Wanna Know. Thank you.